Welcome home. This is the Irish Roots Cafe where every day's a holiday and there's always room for one more. Come right this way. Have a seat with me today in the corner booth celebrating our 75th week. Sweeney, clear the floor. Katie, bar the door. Molly, put on another pot of Irish coffee. It's time we get this show on the road. We've got another full house today. Not a chair to spare. I'm Michael Laughlin, your host. You can reach me on my webpage at irishroots.com where you can check out the written show notes on my blog. You can search all of our books now. We've got almost all of them on our free search uh, setup. It's a brand new thing. We also have the free index check that you can do on each book. Uh, but this is new. You can actually go in and pull up a page on that book. And uh, I think we've got over half the books on that system now. So be sure to check it out. And yeah, it's just another free service from the Irish Roots Cafe. And remember, you can also call me directly and leave a message on my phone recorder at 816-256-3360 and leave your comments, or better yet, leave your family search or your song or recitation right on my recorder. Try it, you'll like it. Well, let me see. We're into summertime here at the cafe, and that means we're busy. We're getting ready to go to the Irish Festival uh, in Dublin, Ohio for, gosh, the 10th or 11th year. I can't remember which. So we hope to see you there. If you're there, be sure to stop and say hi. I may be sitting back in that chair uh, uh, resting a little bit, but uh, I'd be glad to talk to all of you. And we we'll might bring our videos with you. I, I forgot to tell you what we're doing. We have just got through uh, filming, uh, what, 12 different little I guess they're like two minute videos and they, uh, they're sort of instructional. Uh, one of them I did for members, it's going to be on Irish family names and, uh, uh, the others I did on our books. And I also did one uh, on each of our three podcasts. So you can click in there and sort of, uh, see me in action or in action, depending on what you think of it. And, uh, they'll be pretty good. And if you're interested in a book and you haven't seen it before, and you might be curious just about what it's about, this might give you a taste and uh, you'd see if you'd like it or not. So that really is uh, the story of what we've got going on around here. I think uh, we need to move on to today's guest. And today's guest is really uh, on a national level. If she was a local, uh, a local celebrity, we'd go with the Irish in America uh, broadcast. But uh, this is national. And uh, Patricia Hardy was one of the founders of Irish America magazine. And that's a magazine that really couldn't have made it any other time but our generation here as we hit success and uh, uh, national rec recognition. So uh, might consider taking a look at that magazine. She'll tell us all about it. Uh, she's out there in the back room with Molly's keeping her busy. And uh, we're going to have to get over there to the corner booth pretty quick. I can see she's finishing up her. Uh, is that a salad? I can't tell. She just took a bite of somebody else's steak, I think. I'm not sure. But at any rate, we're going to have a good time today. And we're going to... Uh, we're going to have two interviews in a row with Patricia, and uh, she's a good one, and she's going to talk about a lot of things. Her ancestors immigrated to the South, and she thinks she might be related to Flannery O'Connor, the great American writer, uh, whose grandfather was Patrick Hardy from County Tipperary. And she traced her family uh, right here to America, and she's looking for more family members now. So it's in the reverse of what most of us are doing. We're looking for family in Ireland. Well, She's from Ireland looking for family in America. So that's an interesting uh, contrast. And she'll also talk about some of her favorite places in Ireland, like uh, the Burren and Clue Bay and Crow Patrick. And, uh, and she's got some special comments about New Mexico that she likes an awful lot. So uh, she's also edited a book we'll talk a little bit about. She notes uh, Gregory Peck and his Irish grandmother. And uh, gosh, so many things. It's going to be a real good little conversation now. So I think we better get right to it. Let's walk out of the back room in here and get right up into the corner booth. There it is. I'm going over now. Let's listen to Patricia and uh, hear what she has to say. We're putting aside all our regular features uh, uh, this week so we can uh, listen to this interview uncut and uh, enjoy it. So let's welcome Patricia and have a seat right now. Well, we're at the Irish Roots Cafe today, and we've got a special guest. Molly was over there, I think, serving some coffee, and she came back and she said, hey, there's somebody you got to talk to. So I made a quick beeline and uh, uh, met with Patricia and asked her over to the corner booth here where we can sit down and talk informally. Uh, Patricia, how are you this morning? I'm very well, thank you, Michael. 
Well, you know, there's a lot of people uh, in Irish America that have heard of the, the magazine Irish America and may have known of uh, uh, at least one book I know that you, you uh, edited. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about how you got to that position? Oh, sure. You know, the magazine started um, in 1985. I met up with Neil O'Dowd in San Francisco at around 1979. I had, I had emigrated from Ireland in the early 70s. And he had just uh, he had uh, just started a newspaper out there called The Irishman. So uh, I ended up uh, working with Neil for a few years, and then we decided to come to New York in 1985 and start Irish America magazine, and, and now, which we did, and how, it's been going ever since. Well, and, and since it's still here, it's got to be going good. That's a really tough business to make it in. I know that for sure. Uh, you mentioned you came from Ireland. What uh, what are the family names in your uh, background there? Well, my family name is Harty, and uh, my mother was an Egan, and we have some Duggins and Murphys and Walls, and, um, you know. So and what, what counties were the Hardy family from? We're from Tipperary, okay. from, from North Tip, Good. and my mother's family are from Waterford, from Dungarvan. It's sort of a strange thing, isn't it, that, that so many uh, new people have been moving into Ireland instead of the people from Ireland moving out as much as they have in the past? Yeah, it's interesting times in Ireland. What, uh, what uh, made me chuckle a little bit is, is the whole uh, um, Polish emigration, which has really boosted up the whole Catholic Church again, you know. It seems like... Um, it seems like you know we had a we ran a, a piece oh you know last year or something called the fateful departed about the demise of um, I guess it was about five years ago anyway it was talking about the demise of the Irish Church and the fact that a lot of uh, the younger Irish weren't going to church anymore and now you have this huge Polish influx um, who are really actually quite conservative like Catholic you know somebody said they're uh, they're like we were in the fifties so. Well, I got a kick out of that. Well, yeah, it's like history repeating itself in reverse. Instead of Ireland going out and 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 converting or bringing uh, uh, Europe to a conservative way, it's sort of the uh, other way around. Yeah, it's interesting. Interesting times in Ireland. Boy, it sure is. Well, now, you know, you're a perfect person to ask. The the when you look at the Irish American, especially people that's been here for a few generations. What differences do you see uh, uh, between the, the Irish in Ireland and the Irish American? Well, what struck me about the Irish in America, and when I came out here in, in 1972, I, I spent the summer in Atlantic City, and then myself and a, a couple of girls from Cork, we got one of those uh, Greyhound bus tickets, $99 uh, for 90 days, and we went around the States. And being from Ireland, you know, we didn't—I didn't really know much about about Irish America. They basically kind of told us uh, about the famine, and they got on the coffin ships, but they never told us what happened. You know, right. after that, it was just like they got on the coffin ships. Mm -hmm. And so, going around the country, um, you know, they, they, these kind of naive uh, Irish girls, in a way, we, we kept meeting people who said, well, I'm Irish, and we would say, you are? And they'd say, yeah. <laughs> and, um, and, and you know, they were just so nice, and they were so thrilled to meet um, people from Ireland. Mm -hmm. And even though they're, they had never, um, they'd never been to Ireland, they felt that connection. They felt that, that you know. So I, um, I that, that, that caught me. And uh, when we started the magazine, I wanted to kind of honor that uh, spirit of the ancestors in a way and that feeling that has survived down through the generations in a way even though it's it's uh, been dislocated from ireland but that connection you know well, it is amazing and i've often thought you know we sit here and we'll say well yeah i'm irish what are you yeah well, i'm irish or i'm english or i'm italian and i'm thinking well we're really american but uh, that irish has stuck with us for so long uh that the, there's just no way to shake it it's something inside even though after say three maybe four generations you've forgotten all the stories that were handed down there's still uh, something that's in the back of your mind that's passed on oh it's amazing and it's amazing this whole genetic thing i mean how characteristics get passed on down to the generations and how you can meet somebody 
you know, and, and who's never been to Ireland or brought up in an Irish neighborhood and an Irish family or something, and yet you meet them and you you're instantly kind of on the same wavelength, you know. Oh, I know. So, I, it's uh, I remember one time in uh, Killarney, I was sitting there and I heard this table of people were sort of debating lively at, at the over the dinner table in a friendly way, and I could have been back in my uh, living room of my grandmother. Uh, uh, back in Missouri, because the the attitudes and the the caustic invective used it sometimes <laughs> was the very same, and I didn't hear that anywhere else in Ireland except right there where my family had come from. Uh, so I think that's amazing. I know Thomas Keneally, the uh, Australian writer, put it in a really nice way. He, he said about his first trip to Ireland, he said it was an always but never known place. So even though he'd never been there before, I mean, and it's true, you know, you just, even when I go to Boston sometimes and I see, I walk into a store or something, I see those Irish faces that remind me of, of faces at home, you know? Well, they're still carrying that R1B genetic coat around. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. It is. And but to, to get back to the difference, I guess what immediately struck me, and, and this is something that... Um, that I really um, love about Irish Americans is that they really treasure the heritage, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, and they were always very proud to say that they were Irish, you know, they they were not all afraid to stand up and say, well, yeah, I'm Irish, you know, and whereas in Ireland you just, I suppose, well, that's what you were anyway, but you were kind of quiet about it, you know. Yes. So I love this whole idea. And the fact, and I and I felt that they really had more of an appreciation, in a way, for for Irish culture and music and history, and in many t in many cases, were much more knowledgeable well, about yeah. Ireland than than people at home. So you know that that struck me. And if you look back at our history, if you look at the John Quinns, who supported the whole Irish Renaissance with Yeats and, and Joyce and all of that, and you look at Irish Americans throughout the years, whether it was with, with the revolutions or with cultural revolutions, you know, who were there to, to uh, lend that helping hand. So I don't, I don't know where Irish America, I don't know where Ireland would be without Irish America, especially in terms of the peace process and, you know, just over the generations. Oh, that's right. And there's, uh, I imagine, have you been to pretty much all the four corners of the U.S. talking to people, uh, uh, you know, in person, or is it mainly... Uh, uh, contact through the magazine. It's mainly contact contact uh, through the magazine, and I've traveled extensively around the country, and uh, I was thrilled. I, I spent a couple of months out in in New Mexico on a on a writer's program, and I was just delighted to walk into a house one day and uh, see a copy of Irish America magazine on the table. I was like, you know, so it's it's uh, wherever I go, it just amazes me that people. Uh, people have the magazine or know about the magazine or just happy to, about the idea of the magazine when I tell them about it, you know. So, um, yeah, it's uh, it's great. And I have a lot of family in San Francisco. My mother emigrated. Uh, most of my family, a lot of my family emigrated out to the States. Um, many of them, uh, several of my brothers have gone back to Ireland now. But my mother lives in San Francisco, and a couple of my sisters and a couple of my brothers. So I go out there a lot. And of course, there's a there's a big Irish um, contingent in San Francisco. But you're in uh, where? You're based in Kansas. I, I'm in Kansas City, Missouri, right on the border there. And uh, uh, this broadcast goes out all over the world. We've got a, actually got a thousand listeners in uh, Australia and uh, another thousand in Ireland. And uh, the rest uh, spread across the U.S. It's it's pretty amazing. I just got back from Savannah, Georgia, uh, uh, due to this podcast. They heard it down there. You know, they've got 750,000 people that march in the parade on St. Patrick's Day. It's incredible, isn't it? That whole Southern Irish thing, which we're really just starting in the last couple of years to explore in the magazine. We, we're doing an event. We do an event down there called the Stars of the South. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm sort of doing something a little bit in in, uh, in reverse of maybe what the Irish Americans do when they go to Ireland is that uh, I'm tracing my roots over here. And one of um, my ancestors emigrated to the south, and I believe uh, I'm claiming relationship to um, – to Flannery O'Connor, the great uh, American writer, right. because her great-grandfather was Patrick Harty, and he was from Tipperary.
And since we're a very small clan in Tipperary, in Ireland actually, but especially in Tipperary, and we're all Patricks, I'm um, I'm gonna go and uh, that's my my quest is to go and find uh, her Patrick Harty and uh, try and see if if indeed we are related. Oh, that'd be good. Yeah, that's interesting. To all the stuff I hear is usually about everybody trying to get back to Ireland, written books on it, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it, it is nice to hear it coming the other way. It's it's refreshing. Yeah, because I even I look at a photograph of Flannery O'Connor, and I, she could be one of my aunts. She just has this whole look, you know. So I, I love the whole Irish American story. I love, I love finding out about like the Georgia O'Keeffe's and, and and you know the Irish ancestors that came over. And actually, speaking of Kansas, one of the people we've interviewed for the next the next issue is. Uh, a wonderful singer called Ashley Davis, mm -hmm. who is from Kansas, and she's over in Ireland now, and she's doing a, a record with Moya Brennan of Clannad, and uh, and she, her whole interview talks about uh, you know five generations later discovering this, like you said, this kind of lost heritage and how how much it means to her, you know, mm -hmm. and how she feels like she's with family when she's uh, when she's with Irish people, so. You know. Well, I tell you, it sure got to me because I just started out as a kid on a on a lark. Said, "Well, I think I'll go back and I'll be the first one in my family to find out where we came from." Uh huh. It was like it was like there was a hand behind me because I found both sides of the family in Kerry and Cork on the same trip through a series of crazy coincidences and uh, 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 started. Then I started the books and the publishing and and. Uh, it's just for, so for 30 years, I've had a full-time job that was really invented out of whole cloth, and it's been all, all based on my Irish heritage. Well, that's just great. And, I mean, I, I do think that the ancestral spirits are, are, are guides, you know, yes. especially for, for those generations that left through hard times. I mean, what generation did your family emigrate? Uh, 1854, 1845, so right around the famine, before and after on, on both sides of the family. Right. And, of course, uh, uh, you had the land rushes out there, didn't you, out in, in, in Kansas where people got, like, free land? or? Yeah, the biggest of it was out towards Oklahoma where they just lined up those covered wagons and went for it and uh, right. st st staked their claim. Oh, it's amazing. Well, now, I mean, the whole story of Irish America is just incredible. Yes, it is. It, it's, it's been written about, but it still has to be done again. One final great work i think now that we're getting far away from the far enough away from the original immigrations um, yeah we, we can take a fresh look well what's your favorite uh say just being a tourist in uh in uh america and living in ireland what's your favorite spot in america and favorite spot in uh, ireland actually i grew up on a farm in in tipperary and there's just a lovely corner of the of the farm that's mostly sort of uh, not, uh, it's, it's just a couple of acres and it's really kind of um, kind of bog land or it was when I've when I was growing up I think my brother has drained it all now but it was just little streams and wild strawberry bushes and yeah. all of that sort of stuff and it was called Turian, which I, I think probably I always thought it was this place of Anne some mysterious Anne but I think it probably meant Owen, which is stream, you know, mm -hmm. and, and tour could mean uh, might have been tubber or well or or tower. Sure. But uh, also any place in the west of Ireland, you know, my father would always take us for drives to Clare, so we would go to the Hinch, or I love the burn, just walking in the burn, that wonderful lunar landscape, or, yes. or up to... Um, God, that in Mayo I love. It's just so empty, and you can still drive for miles and not see anybody. And right. And then you have that wonderful um, God. I mean, anywhere around Clue Bay or Croke Patrick or that drive from Lewisburg to, to Delphi. I don't know if you've done that, where they do the famine walk. It's just haunting, you yes, know? Yes, yes. And I, I did you go up uh, Crow Patrick? I haven't, yes, but I intend to. 
I, 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 I intend to do. I started up once, and then I saw these healthy people coming down looking exhausted, and I thought I better prepare. <laughs> I also want to do Loch Derg, you know, that whole pilgrimage uh, island. I promised that from years ago in Ireland, if I passed my exams, I would, uh, would do the pilgrimage uh, three times. Mm -hmm. I haven't done it once yet, so I better get going one of these days. But, you know, anywhere... But I love also the inland counties, you know. I mean, I love um, I love just driving around Tipperary. Or, Were you hmm? surrounded by Ryans in Tipperary? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it, it There's so many Ryans there. They all have nicknames. There's the Plunger Ryan and the Ryan Marcus, and uh, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, that's right. That happens so often in Ireland. In, in local areas, they're surrounded by one surname, and uh, sometimes they actually end up making a new name out of those those nicknames. That's right. Yeah, or sometimes they refer to them as their mother, their mother's name. So it would be Annie, uh, Annie Devlin Ryan, or or something like that. Yeah, you know? yeah, that's right. It was necessary. Hey, mm. what, how about America? Any favorite tourist spot that you just sort of hit and said, "Boy, this is amazing." Oh God, I love um, I love New Mexico. I love driving around there. I mean, the skies. Believe it or not, I get this feeling in New Mexico of Ireland, you know, just those open skies that change all the time and everything yeah. kind of seems to shape shift and even those little grottos on the side of the road, you know, or those crosses actually, which sadly they do in Ireland as well whenever um, somebody's been killed, you know. Yes. But uh, you have that whole, I think the whole American Indian thing and, and, and the Irish thing, somehow that whole Celtic spirituality and the Native American just leaves something in the air so you have it. But uh, I have so many uh, favorite spots. I love San Francisco. We're up north of San Francisco driving up to Sonoma County. I have a sister who lives up there, and it's magical. But Well, thank you, Patricia. I think we're going to call it a, a, a day right now, and we'll, we'll come back and talk to you tomorrow. You're right about that being a magical place. That's what draws all the people out there. And, uh, boy, I, sometimes I wish it was a better-kept secret. I could move out there, and it wouldn't be so crowded, and I could actually... Uh, afford some of that real estate wouldn't that be fun well listen we'll see you next week for the uh, last half of this and now the crowd's getting anxious and boy i've got so much to do back here we got those videos to all get up and post it and uh, uh so i'm just going to remind you to send your comments by clicking the contact link on our webpage at irishroots.com or send by mail to our american address at box 7575 kansas city missouri 64116 Leave your message or report on things in your part of the world when you call my phone recorder at 816-256-3360 or Skype me at Irish Roots Cafe. Members foot the bill so they get first priority, but we're open to all. And by the way, a big thank you to all of our members. And away. Oh,